Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated for the reading. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under, under it, every kind of bird will live in the shade of its branches, will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in praying Psalm 92 responsibly by half verse. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. 
to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning. And of your faithfulness in the night season. On the psaltery and on the lyre. And to the melody of the heart. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord. And I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be in silence. That they may show how upright the Lord is. My God, the original A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to our consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he will die for all, so that those who live might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise. Praise. It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth, yet becomes the greatest of all shrubs. Please be seated. I've heard a story before, and you've probably all heard it too. It's about a young boy, let's call him John, or no, Jack. Jack works better. Jack lived with his mom. While his mom worked very hard, they were still not doing very well financially. In other words, they were poor. And one day, Jack's mom sent Jack to the pawn shop to trade in one of their most valuable possessions and then to the grocery store to buy some food for dinner. I mean, like I said, they were really poor. So Jack goes to the pawn shop and trades in the nicest thing he could find in the house. And then he goes to the grocery store. But on his way to the grocery store, Jack runs into a street vendor, something like a farmer's market. And Jack decides to take a chance. And instead of going all the way to the grocery store, I mean, after all, it was like another three more blocks, ugh, he buys two beans from the farmer's market. Supposedly, they are magical beans, although I'm not quite sure what that means. Needless to say, when Jack gets home, his mom is furious yells at Jack, grabs the beans and throws them out the kitchen window, totally dejected by her son who basically just condemned them to starvation. The next morning, though, when Jack and his mom woke up, those beans, they had grown. Not into wheat, like today's first parable, and not into a mustard shrub, like today's second parable, but into a giant beanstalk. Yes, I am telling the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. And I'm not going to keep going because Joseph Jacobs, the author of the most popular version that we know, he gets a little weird and then there's a giant and a golden goose or a goose that lays golden eggs, something like that. But the point is this. Even a tiny little bean can grow into a great big beanstalk. 
and we don't even have to use fairy tales as examples, watch what happens when you plant a pepper seed or a sunflower seed or a mustard seed. Seeds grow. They are designed to grow, and that growth can seem kind of like magic. Unless we are trained horticulturalists studying the growth patterns of seeds, more often than not, planting seeds, watching things grow, does kind of seem like magic or like a miracle. And that is what Jesus is pulling on in today's gospel reading from Mark. Jesus uses two common images, wheat and mustard seeds, and leans heavily on the perceived magic or miracle that is growth from seed to field of wheat, or greatest of all shrubs. Sure, we can talk about the science behind how things grow from seed to plant, but even when we know how it all works, the magic of growing from a seed to the greatest of all shrubs can still feel very much like magic, like a miracle. That's what Jesus is indicating in today's reading. Even when we know that growth will happen, it can still seem like magic. All we can do is plant the seed and wait. I suspect it's kind of like St. Philip's. I know you're thinking, well, that's kind of a big jump, but stay with me. You see, St. Philip's is like a mustard seed or wheat. We are something great, something huge and magical, something full of so much potential and energy and growth. We are a church of over 250 people coming together to worship and pray and praise on an average Sunday. 250. We are a church of over 50 different ministries engaging with the world around us. A church that currently has four worship services on a Sunday. Four. And there's room for more. St. Philip's is the seed that is scattered on the ground, growing and continuing to grow. And sure, like a seed, we can dissect St. Philip's and see how the growth happens, or we can enjoy the magic of the growth as it happens around us, as our passion, our joy, our hope, our enthusiasm continues to be contagious, continues to garner energy, not just from ourselves, but from our friends and our neighbors, from people we might meet in a bar or a restaurant or in the grocery store or even at the Oak Island or Southport outdoor summer concerts. This is the South. That means often one of the very first questions asked when you meet someone is, where do you go to church? And granted, I tend to get that asked a whole lot more often, you know. Mm. Still, I suspect you all get it too. And when I'm asked, I say, I go to St. Philip's Episcopal Church in downtown Southport. Then I add, when you hear the church bells in town, those are our bells. And then, I've had to practice this, but I always add one last sentence. You should come visit. There's always a spot waiting for you whenever you do. Some people just laugh at me, think I'm supposed to say stuff like that. Some people think I'm crazy when I say stuff like that. But some people really think about it. And I know that just about every single one of you is here because someone else invited you, invited you to come, not just to the Episcopal Church, but to St. Philip's Episcopal Church. Maybe it was your parents when you were born and you identify as cradle Episcopalian. You'd no, go nowhere else but the Episcopal Church. Maybe it was your spouse when you all got married and you two decided that this was a good option. Maybe it was when your friends or neighbors invited you to come and see what we're all about. These are seeds scattered on the ground, tossed to the wind. Granted, yes, not all of the seeds will grow into wheat, there are several other parables in scripture about seeds not successfully growing into wheat. But enough seeds will. Enough of our invites will be accepted that we will continue to grow. One thing, real quick. I know one of the strategies for the vestry this year is to grow the church. And I like to think that growing the church is something that happens almost as 
a side effect. A side effect of being a church that is enthusiastic, passionate, authentic, filled with love and joy, filled with hope and excitement, filled with welcoming people who, when they see a stranger introduce themselves, say, come, sit next to me, or it's so good to see you, and then say something like, let me tell you a little bit about how awesome St. Philip's is, or even better, say, let me show you how awesome St. Philip's is. And here is the big thing. Now, I'm not going to try to dissect these parables and explain what the kingdom of God is like, as if the kingdom of God is somewhere there, out there. Instead, I'm going to explain how, just like the seeds scattered on the ground that seem to magically grow and eventually is abundant enough to harvest, just like the mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, St. Philip's can become our own version of the kingdom of God, a place where everyone is welcome and everyone knows that they are welcome, where love and joy and hope overflow until it is harvested like wheat and shared with not just those sitting near you in a pew, also with those walking along the street past the church and those who haven't even heard of us yet have never heard our church bells ring. St. Philip's, you, all y'all, I had to throw that in there, are like the kingdom of God, a growing church. And it is true, based on numbers I've heard on, you know, in conversations over the past three years, we have a 20% net growth rate. That's not gross, that's net. I had to look up the difference. St. Philip's is like the kingdom of God, a growing church, becoming something so great that if we're lucky, we'll one day become as magical as a beanstalk or wheat of a field of wheat or a mustard seed. Now, all you have to do, all we have to do, is to go plant those seeds and share the good news. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a grain of wheat or a mustard seed that will grow. Let us be like the kingdom of God. Amen. Standing as able, let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. 
We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray you so to God, Father Eric and Sue during their sabbatical. May they return to St. Philip's restored in body, mind, and spirit. We also pray that you bless this parish and all who come here. May we carry out with joy the ministries to which we are called. May this also be a time of intentional rest, prayer, and reflection for us. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, sister. Good morning. Good morning. It is excellent to see everyone here this morning. If you are visiting for one of the first times or the first time, we're glad you're here. If you happen to come every Sunday or almost every Sunday, we're glad you're here too. Um, there is a lot happening. Make sure you take your green sheet home and read all about what's happening at St. Philip's. Uh, before Next Sunday, though, next Saturday, is a Eucharistic minister and lector training. There's a little bit more information about it in, on your green sheet. It's at 10 o'clock here next Saturday. If you are interested in helping with distribution of communion or participating in the worship service by reading, please show up or let myself or Deacon Pam know that you have interest and plan to come. We would love to have you. Uh, just looking ahead, July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, the offices will be closed, and we will not be doing our noon Eucharist on Wednesday, July 3rd. If you have been here before for the 4th of July, you know exactly why our office is closed. <laughs> um, but we will be open, I believe, on the 1st, which will be the Monday of that week, if anything happens. And there's more information also about that in your green sheet. I will also say if there's a pastoral need during that time, call the church. It will be answered. I believe directions for that are on the green sheet. Good. Yes. Okay. Good. We have a ministry in focus today. Come on down, Gerard.
Good morning to you all. This little vignette that's set aside every Sunday morning, as Lisa, as Mother Lisa just pointed out, is a ministry in focus. Well, I am not a ministry, but I am, I am here this morning to talk to you about something that is very, very important to me, and I hope that by the time I'm finished, it's also going to be important to many of you. And I promise you, although this is not ministry in focus, I will focus and I will be brief. Now, to begin, you're probably wondering, what in the world have I got on my head? And if you've been looking and paying any attention over the past few months, I've been sitting up back there where Dick Lee is wearing one of these. So I want to tell you what I'm not doing. I'm not listening to a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> I'm not communicating with the Martians. And unfortunately, I am not listening to my second replay of last night's Red Sox win over the Yankees. <laughs> but nonetheless, Let's talk about what I want to talk about here. Um, this morning, I put this on. I was at the 8 o'clock liturgy, and now I'm at this liturgy with the same message. And beginning with the opening acclamation, right through to the finish of Mother Lisa's wonderfully metaphoric homily, I heard and understood every single word that was said. I heard its clarity, I heard its clearness, and I heard total lack of ambiguity in the intent and the meaning of each word that was used. That is a new experience for me, because my first two years as a member of St. Philip, I sat out where you are, totally in silence. I did not have a clue what was going on. And when we leave Mass after Sunday morning, we'd have our coffee, and then Dorothy and I would drive home, and I would say, Dorothy, tell me what was said. So between here and St. James, she would tell me what Father Eric had to say, what Mother Lisa had to say, and I would start to understand. I think she got really sick of having to, that job because somewhere along the line, somebody, and I think it was her, told me that the parish had these little things here. So I found out these are meant to help us who are hearing impaired hear. And I went looking for them, and frankly, they were very, very well hidden. And there were signs advertising their availability, even better hidden behind other signage, etc. I finally found them, and I found them in a, total, a state of total, complete disrepair. The batteries had leaked all through them, and frankly, they didn't work. So I took them home, and we scrubbed them down, and we changed the batteries, and we did a lot of other things to them, and then we started trying them. And these originally came when they were ordered with this thing for an earpiece, and I know back when a number of you probably tried this thing and found this to be totally, totally ineffective. This is good if you have ears like a Cocker Spaniel, but it's no good if you have real ears and you want to hear what's going on. So we kind of set those aside, and with some help, we focused on getting these. So now we have units that will help you hear, receivers that will bring the hearing in, and this to help, to help you hear. So if you are one of the group, oh, the other thing I want to tell you about this is that we only have four of these. Nobody uses them. Every week I sanitize them, every week I clean them, every week I check the batteries, every week I seal them in a plastic bag and I put them over there and when I come here, they're still there, nobody uses them. And I know there's a need here because the NIH tells us that over 70% of the people who are over 70 have some sort of a hearing loss like I do and do need some sort of hearing assistance. Even if you're wearing hearing aids right now as I am, this will help you immeasurably. So if you are one of those people who is struggling to hear what is said here on Sunday morning, I want to call this to your attention. If you have questions, concerns, or ideas, I'll be up back cleaning this up and reordering some of the other things. Oh, by the way, if you come and you're not satisfied with the fact that these have been sanitized, and I promise you they have, I have put a container of sanitary wipes up there where you can just work this over a little bit more. So there was absolutely no reason other than vanity why you don't want to use these. Thank you for listening. And I will be back up there if you have any questions or concerns that you want to share with me. Excuse me. Thank you, Gerard. And he says he's not a ministry, but you can tell by how much work he puts into us, he is definitely a ministry. Thank you. <laughs> I also want to thank Doug, 
If you notice the person who came out from behind the organ, it was not Debbie today, it is Doug. Debbie is home recovering from the celebration of her daughter's wedding, which was yesterday. Very exciting. So Doug is filling in and will be leading a men's vocal group very shortly. Doug, thank you for being here and providing the music today. And finally, happy Father's Day. All of us are here because of having fathers. Many of us are fathers or want to be fathers or had men in our lives who were like a father to us. On this day, we pause to remember and pray for those men who provided for us, cared for us, and protected us, our fathers and father-like figures. I invite you at this time to offer the name of your father or a father-like figure aloud as a prayer to the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for our fathers, whose prayers reflect your caring, whose caring speaks of your nature, whose nature is a living expression of your love. We remember those who are now walking with you, and we ask your blessing upon those who continue to walk with us. Grant that we, their children, may honor them always. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself for us an offering.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with blessed Philip and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.